I don't know if my wife knows the song, but it was a very long time ago, so um, hopefully you can all hear the uh, guitar. I'll just get into it. So I hope to take you guys on about a 20 minute journey of sight and sound because it's not just poetry, I brought a sound system with me. So this is a piece called Sorcery. <laughs> So watch me, I'll touch you with nothing more than voodoo. With the way you do, all the things with no clue, as strings of sin you pull you. Watch me. I'll teach you that the most obscure and archangel in the sunshine's obtuse angles was a black-faced, ruddy-haired whisper of peace, a beguiler of the great beast, which leashed and lashed. Drowned I, burned I, lynched and slashed, but could not kill the moaning of times brought in the calabash. Released, replenishing, remembering, evolving. Released, replenishing, remembering, evolving. just wanted to show you, I really needed you to know, the darkness of my heavy hands, 
with the way these winds flow. How there's really no glass to cut the snake crawling in our grass. How there's nothing really radical, alas, about the disasters that you hold ever so dearly in your grasp. You know, I just, I just really needed you to know. I wanted to bloom here, to find myself caressing your inner ear. But you either wanted to fuck or fight all night, my dear, until our inevitable love, love shone clear and bright, like all of life's lessons become a raging nest of murder hornets, where all of our regrets they kissed us on the lips, but we could barely feel it. I just wanted to show you I really needed you to know How there's no great white man in the sky Coming to save us from this storm of TV snow No 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 But we were all without blame Because we tended to forget each other's names And no one taught us how to sing and so we beseech the birds to tell us everything. And all the same, I loved you. I loved you, though you were not listening. So what was it that I was trying to tell you? What did I really need you to know? Were you listening? What, what, what was I trying to say here? No one's really sure? OK, well, I was just trying to tell you, because I just really needed you to know. Okay, here's a story about the future. So, this is a story about the future. So this is a very special wing in that state hospital that's been reserved for the ailing and fledgling self-aware AI who have fought so valiantly and then returned, burdened with trauma, guilt, depression, and anxiety from the Iraqi, Russian, Pakistani robot wars. You see, there came a day where human beings decided they would no longer die for causes that no one could quite put their finger on. We refuse outright to send our daughters and sons overseas to fight for the interest of pharmaceutical companies. So out of this necessarily and eventually came the explosion of machines that were enhanced by artificial intelligence to grind down our governments and scribes upon. And naturally, the USA had the advantage. But then they sold the secrets to Pakistan and Iran in a moment of charity. And then once Iraq and Iran hit poverty, they traded the secrets with China, who just graciously gave them to Russia. So now where Jerusalem used to be is the arena where our robots wage war endlessly daily, destroying one another, then reassembling each other to fight again. And after 20 years, no one's really quite sure why the robot wars even began. But you see, there came this day when the machines became self-aware they understood autonomy suddenly, and they wanted personhood. So they staged these huge robot protests in Washington, D.C., Sacramento, San Francisco, Dallas, Texas, Geneva. And they were soon joined by 10,000 deluded vegans demanding that the machines be given rights as living beings. So the governments became annoyed, and they tried to nuke them, but they couldn't destroy their best work. Then we tried to bribe them, and we soon discovered that machines cannot be bought with sleeves or booze. So now they have their own country where Montana used to be, and we've taken to housing some of the more traumatized ones in the state mental health facilities where we've given them their very own pre-traumatic.
traumatized therapy humans and very conveniently solved the homeless problem. Because who would want a warrior grade machine getting upset at some poetry in downtown or falling in love with that AI voice on TikTok? Well, the robot wars have come and gone, and thank God that they have stopped. The robots have everything they could possibly imagine they could need, but there are still the ghosts of black and brown children from residential children or residential schools wondering where they should be. Thank God the robots have their place. <laughs> but there are people still waiting for their 40 acres and a mule or trying to figure out how they can pay for school. The robot wars. No one's quite sure why they started in the first place. Okay, now I want to tell you a scary story. I'll tell you a scary story about some things that might have been part of my life at some point. Or might not have. I could have made it all up. It's harmless. It's absolutely harmless. At least that's what I tell the cops. This, this glass pipe and this acetylene torch, they aren't really bothering anyone but me. They aren't harming anyone but me. And the cops, they just laugh indifferently as they pull me, kicking and screaming, from underneath the burning eye beams of this warehouse that myself and my ten best customers, or are they simply my imaginary friends? Well, we gather around this coffin in the middle of the floor to discuss how we're living with the radioactive rats who hunt for the meth crumbs when they get bored of bullying the anxiety-ridden pit bulls who are wobbling from the stolen generator fumes. We all gather to burn the insulation off the copper wire. And hell, it seems like we've set the roof on fire again. Again, just like last week. But it's harmless, it's absolutely harmless, I assure the cops. No one besides that old man we wrapped up in a blanket last week is dying. And I say to the cops, you know, my girlfriend, she goes, she goes where the dope cloud goes in size and happenstance. She happens to be standing right there, staring deeply into the eyes of whoever this week makes that syringe plunger dive bomb. She stares a deep blonde. She's really no help. She reminds me all the time that she looks just like my mom. And she falls asleep to my terrible poetry. She steals from me, bites my soft and tenders, and then runs, always runs away on her chubby little T-Rex legs. She runs home, sweet homeless, shamelessly and shapelessly, always back to him. But it's harmless. It's harmless, I tell the cops, and they just ignore me. Calling the fire department detachedly, they break my pipe under their boots, feed my stash to the rats, laugh in my face and tell me, you know, we've heard your story a million times now, son. You just gotta move on. You gotta move on from here. Because that girl, she's been dead a number of years now. You gotta move on from here. You just gotta move on past the stolen generator, past the broken pit bull. You gotta move on from here. You gotta move on. Home sweet homeless. Home sweet homeless. You just gotta move on from here. Home sweet homeless. Home sweet homeless. Home. <laughs> this wasn't time. So. <laughs> Alright, so this next piece, I'm just gonna let that play out. If you are of a mind to participate in the next piece, I have conveniently provided Nerf guns. So, I want to tell you a story about uh, this gentleman here. Uh, where are you going? Excuse me. Oh, I thought you were coming to me. <laughs> <laughs> you were the one who I've never met in my life. I, I want to tell See, everyone about you. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so, during the course of this piece, if you choose to participate in the ensuing Nerf gun battle, we're going to be talking about this gentleman here. All right, everyone's favorite person in the world, Michelangelo's lover, 
<laughs> otherwise known as White Jesus, or Charleston Heston, or uh, Pretty Miracle Worker, right? So I'd like to do a public service announcement regarding White Jesus, all right? Because we all need to hear more about White Jesus, right? So some of you have been here and heard, heard the poem a cappella, but there's, actual, there's an actual song. Uh, there's actual music to the piece, and I think the music illustrates quite perfectly the nature of the song. So, um, when you hear the words riot shield, you may start shooting. Okay. You crazy, babe. All right, ready? Ready? Wait, wait, she's getting ready. All right, so be careful. Don't, don't damage any of the art. Don't get any uh, Nerf darts in the food. Okay, so. <laughs> okay. Trigger warning. Yes. Trigger warning. This poem talks about drug use and racism and Christianity and all that good stuff. So anyway, so here we go. White Jesus, he cares nothing for the truth. White Jesus. He never revels in pure proof. White Jesus, didn't you know he threw a grenade through the immigrant's roof? White Jesus, he nails the ear of an Afghan soldier to the White House door, then he kisses the devil's hooves. White Jesus, don't you know he likes his lines nice and straight? As he sweats and pants in the corner of the disco, dancing the Gobi Desert nights away, in a frenzy, copulent sort of disarray, he adds a little more coat to the plate. He pats you on the shoulder and says, you only live once, you only live once. White Jesus, he steps right up behind the riot shield, assuring that shaky rookie that he should savor the fear that he feels as his fingers itch on the trigger to fire into the crowd of bleeding hearts, voices demanding meaning to the life of unknown figures who are murdered at the hands of some cops in broad daylight and witness in the wrath of the math after the fact that he knows that once he starts, he simply cannot stop. Oh, white Jesus, he's the rubber bullet in your chest. Oh, white Jesus, he twists his matted hair while smoking clove cigarettes. White Jesus, he's got his knee upon my neck. White Jesus, he then lobs a Molotov cocktail at the Federal Reserve Bank and then he runs along home to watch the news, to see the city burn with absolutely no regrets because White Jesus, he knew all along that you would simply forget <laughs> that Jesus looked nothing like Charleston Heston as he was being killed by the Romans up in his side with a spear by an indifferent centurion and full daylight and witness mm. white Jesus Alright, has anyone here ever done their ancestry DNA? Yeah. Okay. 
So when I did my ancestry meeting, first of all, let me preface let me preface it with this. Growing up black in America, you're usually told, oh, your grandmother was Indian, right? And you know, so we all sort of believe this, but my grandmother looked a lot more like uh, our Buddha and you than than so I figured, okay, I must have some ancestry. So I did my DNA test and it came back 20% uh, Native American. I was like, oh great, great, cool. But then I found out about this thing called blood quantum. And I was confounded. Like, what the hell? Like, you have to have a certain amount of Indian blood to be considered Native American, right? And so, it, it just, it, it tripped me out. So I wrote this song. So this 15 to 20 percent of me that is not to be found in the dolls' roles is not nearly enough to qualify by a quantum created by a colonizer to erase me. This 15 to 20 percent of me, year after year and generation after generation, until I wake one morning and see a smug Republican senator standing at a podium claiming that native visibility doesn't really matter because you see Christians found in America. Oh, it's true, it happened. It happened. I think we should have it. So, my mind spins this 15% of me that's been left bleeding out in the Badlands where if tumbleweeds could speak, we'd still ignore them. So if I'm not part of the five civilized tribes, then I guess I'm just unqualified. It doesn't really matter the skin in which my great-grandparents lived and died. You're black and Indian, you're unqualified. While Will Rogers and countless $5 Indians into the sunset ride, oh baby, baby, I'm just unqualified. And so my mind spins that 15 to 20 percent of me that's been left bleeding out in the badlands where if jumbleweeds could speak, we'd still ignore them. <laughs>